actually, the, the show was started too, and uh, Calvin Rand and I had known each other for quite a few years, and he asked me to help with getting things going for it, so I am one of the charter members of the Shaw Festival Guild. And um, we did do a lot of work to raise money for it. We sent out a lot of uh, letters and phone calls, and we had a big volunteer group. And um, as you know, it has been the thing that's fed the tourist industry in this town for many years, and, and, and it still is and will continue to do. But it was a, a, a very exciting time, um, like the Queen and King and Queen, well, the Queen came with her uh, consort, and uh, they opened the Shaw Festival. We had the opening night there. And uh, many dignitaries um, came. Uh, I, I can't remember all of them, but um, I know they had many. Um, Mrs. Gandhi came. And she landed by helicopter at Dr. Jameson's property. He was living where Trisha Romance has a property now. And um, he, uh, she was uh, one of the people who came to see the theater too. And it was quite a thing because uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, protection for her. Uh, Betty Taylor. She was an excellent seamstress. She was an English war bride, and uh, she had a little shop on the main street called the Yardstick, and she sold materials and wools and things. And so she opened up her back part, and we went in there and sewed, and we made the costumes for the first few years because everything was in the town hall. There was no air conditioning, and people had to sweat through these shows, but they turned out to uh, you know, really be encouraging because everybody enjoyed them. And the, uh, right next to the, the um, well, it used to be Libroc store, uh, the offices of the, they had an office there for um, doing all the um, uh, things that had to be done towards getting tickets and things. And it was run by two or three people but they were usually paid to do it. The volunteers just did mostly um, sewing and uh, helping loaning furniture for the props because there wasn't, we had no money to buy things. And we had a, a really good um, carpenter. Uh, his, name was back, his name was Max Bartell and he screwed all the sets together because we had to take them apart at the end of the time to have them for the next time. And uh, today, uh, anyone who um, had been a uh, designer would never allow that because they, they don't want their designs copied. But we had no other way. We had to screw everything together. And Andy Salins, I think he was the first um, uh, a lighting director and did the lights and Max was the carpenter and somehow we got the productions on and we just sold um, soft drinks in the um, small hall, the town hall. There was nothing else, just soft drinks and s somebody had to, I know I was in charge for quite a few years of getting people to sell those during intermission and before the show, and somebody had to go every day and fill up the coolers and keep that going. And when we had opening nights, um, Paul Albertson, he used to supply champagne for them, I know. He was one of the bakers in town, and, and he used to help a lot. And uh, so everything was decorated nicely, and we even got down and had to scrub that small hall floor once in a while to get it clean enough for the opening nights. But they all worked out well, and there used to be a big party at somebody's house later on, like Dr. Jameson had parties, the Rands had parties, and all the different um, people that were well off that had estates, they used to uh, open their houses to parties. 
So that's how the shell got started. Now, once they started making more money, they put air conditioning in the in the courthouse, and that made it better for people coming from. Well, because it used to get pretty warm in there. And then, of course, when we opened the new theater, um, the guild wasn't as active. We didn't have as much to do because everybody was being paid for the jobs by then.